Now that's just another groove to kickstart your morning. That's right. Good morning, Fiji. It's Gold FM bringing you the classic hits to fine tune your morning. And Fila still trying to fine tune her voice. And as always, Pedali still trying to wake up. Now this is where you'll find us every morning from Monday to Friday. On Daybreak with Pedali and Fina from 6 to 9. Join, Join us. How would you like to spend your morning? You could spend your morning like this. Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to the morning ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM Today Seed Music. Tonight, students hospitalized in yet another bus fire. Proposed scrapping of exclusive rights for broadcasters welcomed. And new machines for Nausori Airport. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and you're watching FBC News. Two students of Antidakumbao School are still hospitalized after their bus transporting them to their cadet pass out this morning caught fire. Students had to break the glass at the rear end of the bus to escape. It's believed the fire started from the engine compartment. There was a bus fire report that was received uh, by our officers at around uh, 9.30, uh, whereby unfortunately two students were um, uh, injured in the process. The fire is believed to have started from the engine compartment uh, as investigations are continuing. Ananai Soro says one student is still admitted at the Tamavua Hospital, while the other has been transferred to the CWM Hospital. And late this afternoon, DC's Managing Director Reginald Mohan told FBC News he is not in a position to make a comment as yet. Broadcasters and the public have welcomed the announcement that no exclusive rights will be given to media companies to cover national and sporting events. Government made the revelation earlier this week. Chanel Sivan reports. Expressions of interest are now being considered for a national survey on listenership and viewership. According to the government, scrapping exclusive rights will benefit all Fijians. There's the World Cup, soccer, rugby, then the country as a whole through the television station puts in a bit. And they get to show it in all the television stations. Fiji Television Limited Board Director Nazar Farid says they have no issues with this. Everybody in every corner of this country should have a right, should have a privilege to watch what, whatever the international sports event. So if, uh, if that is the model that uh, the government want to adopt, we are with that. It is good, good. People in the interior, they don't get one television. But this way, everyone will be able to see. It's the right thing to do because uh, they should let uh, all television stations air live rugby matches because uh, it's uh, fair for us consumers. We actually, because some people wouldn't get to catch Fiji One, but they can catch FBC, you see? So that way, in, if all the radio stations are playing the games all at once, all people get a chance to watch the games live. It will be a fair play for all the broadcasters. At the end of the day, all will benefit. Once the policy is in place, companies will have to share the bidding cost according to the percentage of viewership confirmed by the survey. Not everyone uh, watches every TV station. Not everyone listens to every radio station. So uh, if, if uh, there is a sporting event of uh, national importance and if everyone is able to broadcast it, whether through radio or television, then at least uh, we are assured that almost everyone in Fiji, or everyone in Fiji, or, or public members of Fiji, all Fijians, are then able to see or watch. Communications Fiji Limited is yet to respond to questions from FBC News, while my TV preferred not to comment. Channel Shivan. FBC News. The Prime Minister of Orenge Mbaini Marama today signed a memorandum of understanding with the Bar Chamber of Commerce for the new construction of a brand new bar hospital. Mbaini Marama says the project which will benefit close to 90,000 people and is the perfect example of public-private partnerships. He says construction work at the Bar Hospital is long overdue, considering it's 87 years old. The PM says construction of the new hospital will cost more than $23 million, with the government allocating $7.3 million in 2014. Building is expected to start in January, and the government is working with the chamber to finalize plans over the next three months. 
All permanent secretaries are now on temporary contracts, which will expire by October 31st next year. Public Service Commission Permanent Secretary Pramesh Chan says all posts will then be advertised. Vasita Kote Wasawasa reports. The hike in salaries for all permanent secretaries is to encourage better services to the public. And according to the Public Service Commission, stringent measures will be in place when appointing permanent secretaries. The new salary which has come into being is all indexed to that. It is meant uh, to recruit the best and brightest, uh, not necessarily from, from uh, the current uh, cohort of permanent secretaries. It will be open to anybody uh, who wants to join the civil service as a permanent secretary. Pramesh Chan says that while he cannot elaborate on the individual key performance indicators for the various permanent secretaries, their role is clear. Our paramount uh, role would be to ensure that, of course, our permanent secretaries perform and deliver, and, 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 and we recruit the best uh, caliber of permanent secretaries. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, uh, to be able to do that, there will be a whole lot of uh, uh, frameworks uh, put in place. Chand adds there's a lot of expectations from permanent secretaries under their new contracts. They will be recruited from a host of uh, competitive uh, uh, applicants out there. Uh, and and uh, uh, the uh, responsibilities of the job uh, and the um, uh, expectations for delivery uh, will be commensurate with the salary which is being offered. He adds that the recent salary hike is all part of reforms in lifting the standard of service. Vusita Kotewaswasa, FBC News. International travelers arriving through Nasori Airport can now expect much quicker checkout with the installation of a new Biosecurity Authority of Fiji X-ray machine. This also means Biosecurity Authority has done away with manual checks unless it's really necessary. With this new X-ray machine, Biosecurity Authority of Fiji has promised hassle-free checkout for international travelers. Passengers will feel, feel much more dignified there. Eh? Having to ask questions with the passengers and uh, trying to figure out whether the, the passengers are telling the truth or not uh, was quite a difficult task. That's the new X-ray machine that work. The authorities are keeping their fingers crossed that that place doesn't get jammed up like in the past. The process that used to be done before was there was a lot of questions and uh, the passengers uh, felt uncomfortable. Basically what we have now is not many questions have been asked. Minutes after their arrival, these travelers from New Zealand did not hold back on sharing their experiences. It included Shortland Street actress Tawila Blakely. Um, yes, you know, the, the airport here actually reminds me a lot of Samoa. So it's very similar um, in terms of being like Samoa. So, so um, it's been good that it was just a nice, quick, short wait. Yes. You're traveling a number of times. I mean, unnecessary checking and all that. <laughs> it's very good. Happy to see this in Fiji. <laughs> this is much faster. This is much faster and much safer. The installation of this machine is part of BEV's plan to strengthen border security. In the past, uh, border security and customs have been uh, carrying out manual inspections. With manual inspections, uh, as you know, there's bound to be misses in terms of inspection, uh, in terms of small items and drugs. The X-ray machine was previously used at the Nandi International Airport. Mikalonga, FBC News. Just ahead, ACS All Scholars reunite for a common cause. आपकी शादी होने वाली है पाँच पाँच बच्चे होंगे पाँच 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 हाय मैं हूँ आपकी सहेली वेणु सुनते रहेंगे मिर्ची एफ एम मैं हूँ ना नौ से बारह बजे तक
Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. The government has stepped in to advise the 12 landowning units in Monasavu about how best to utilize their funds. The decision was made after a government delegation visited the interior of Vitilevu and witnessed the abundant resources that aren't being utilized. Apisalamidoka reports. The Commissioner Western and the Commissioner Central's office have put forward a proposal to landowners in Monasavu to assist them in investing their compensation payout. In 2005, landowners in Monosabu won their case against the Fiji Electricity Authority and was paid more than $50 million. We've come in to align uh, the funds that they have to a number of uh, government programs and in initiatives. Commander Choweli Dawaki says landowners receive their payments yearly and have proposed to have the full amount invested. Forty uh, percent of that fund is going to, for the investment and 60 uh, percent is to be shared uh, by the Matangali members. But uh, we would like to propose to, to the members of the Matangali if we can have the whole 60, uh, a whole 100 uh, percent towards uh, investment. The Commissioner Western says the landowners will have the last say about this proposal. What we put to the Matangali members uh, to the reps, uh, you go back, uh, discuss with your Matangali and come back and present to us what, what is your need, uh, rather than us dictating to them. Commander Dawaki says if landowners will agree to their proposal, they are looking to invest their funds through dairy farming, fish farming and other long-term investment programs within the government system. Apisolome Doka, FBC News. Since 2008, the Education Ministry introduced numerous initiatives to ensure that every student has access to education. Speaking at the opening of the Fiji Head Teachers Conference in Wunde yesterday, Minister Philippe Mbole said students will continue to benefit from the reforms within the education system. To date, Fiji has 989 teachers in early childhood education in more than 783 centres in Fiji. With more than 60,000 students enrolled, education is now a priority. The increasing involvement by the state in early childhood education has meant the physical extension downward of primary schools to include kindergartens as well as the responsibility of their head teachers. The establishment of two infant schools in well-located areas provides comfort in refurbished classrooms. The idea behind the, the infant schools, establishment of infant schools, is to stop young children aged six and a half or five and a half to eight from boarding in sometimes very ill-equipped primary school boarding facilities. The introduction of a new classification for each level of schooling from years 1 to 13 has also been established, making the transition from primary to secondary and through to tertiary easier. Akusita Tale, FBC News. The Andi Dakumbao School All Girls Association today continued with their 65th anniversary celebrations at their headquarters in Nolly Street, Suva. Raising funds to pay for their new headquarters is the main aim of the week-long celebrations. Apisolami Dokar reports. Former Andi Dakumbao School students from as far as New Zealand and Australia are here to celebrate the 65th anniversary of the school and help raise funds to pay off the new building. This is the uh, third uh, year in a row that we, uh, that we have had solely to pay for our headquarters. Now, um, our headquarters was officially opened on Tuesday, which was the 1st of October. Andilitia says they are blessed to still have some pioneers with them to help them bring in their younger members. People these days, they are not like us. You know, when we are asked to give something for the Vanua or for the group that we belong to, we tend to give. But our younger members are asking, what is in return for us? What is there for us? So uh, it is um, the blessing that uh, the old girls have also agreed that we form a cooperative so that, you know, in a future period of time, they can actually receive dividend out of the shares that they have invested in the property. To top off celebrations today, the school had its first ever cadet pass out. Old scholars, families and friends came in big numbers to witness the event. Police spokesperson Anna Naisoro praised the girls from ACS for putting up a wonderful display this morning. 
Apisalome Doka, FBC News. The Fiji Broadcasting Corporation farewelled one of its longest serving staff this afternoon. Masimeke Latianara worked as a news journalist at the FBC newsroom for almost 55 years. The 76-year-old says a lot has happened in the last few years and wished the company all the best for its future. FBC Chief Executive Riaz Said Kayum thanked Latianara for his contribution towards the success of the organization. Friday Night Sports now. And Jamie, what do you have for us on your last day of the week? Well, Jackie, my week in studio just ends, but all the action in sports is just starting. We have the Fiji Water International Sevens that kicked off today and continues tomorrow. We'll have the day's results from the NZ Stadium after the break. Also up ahead, Fijianos ready to prove their worth in Australia over the weekend. Stay with us. Nama kau mana wasin dengan orang orang tak lali nekabi, mana tolu kena bitu, ena moni dengan apa rombuka, ena bola FM, nampun dua ena serre. Suraj ki pahli kiran ke saat din ki shuruat kijiye, subha ka mangal prabha tap ko shub ho. Subha subha ho khushiyon ka mila, na logo ki parva na dunia ka jamila, panchiyon ka sangeet ho, aur mausam albela, mubarak ho aap ko ye khub surat sabera. हर सोमवार से लेकर शुक्रवार तक सुबह छह से लेकर नौ बजे तक शामिल रहें रेडियो फिजिटो पर हम सफर में रविंद्र सिंह के साथ वेलकम बैक टू एफबीसी स्पोर्ट्स इट वाज अ टफ डे एट द ऑफिस फॉर सम टीम्स कंपीटिंग एट द फिजी वाटर सेंटेनियल इंटरनेशनल सेवेंस एट द एनजे स्टेडियम बिग स्कोर मार्जिन्स वर रिकॉर्ड Rugby fans were treated to a spectacular showing by teams competing in the first day of the Fiji Water International Sevens. The caliber of players on the field was evident in the brisk passing as well as strong defense. The tournament received praise from one player who is supportive of Fiji's efforts to secure a leg of the world circuit. Oh, for sure. I mean, the facilities here are great and, you know, it's the Fiji inside and, you know, it's, I believe it's a national sport here. So there's a lot of support here, both... Uh, economically and socially and the fans are you know driving on the, the team buses around Suva and Fiji in particular you know we've had a, a basically a hero's welcome and I'm sure every team's receiving that so for us this is really where the grassroots of the game is and the passion is and for us as players that's what we feed off and you know I'd love to see that happen one day so yeah. The tournament provides a good opportunity to iron out team's weaknesses before the opening leg of the IRB 7 series. Well it's, it's a very uh, high class caliber teams here and the competition uh, leading into um, you know obviously uh, next week at, at the Gold Coast but um, the caliber of teams here USA, Canada, um, USA, Argentina and France, Australia, Samoa, Fiji uh, world class teams and across the you know the next today and tomorrow we some very high class competition and some great rugby play. The Digicel Fiji 7s team recorded some big wins today, but should expect more stiff competition tomorrow in the quarterfinals. Charlie Ndodakadak, FBC Sports. And while the Digicel Fiji 7s team is playing in the Oceania tournament in Suva, our women's team, Fijiana, will begin its campaign in Australia tomorrow. Being the third seeded team in the Pacific, Fijiana's first clash won't be easy against Top Gun Australia. Elena McDonald reports. With only a week to prepare and just one club game played, the odds are stacked up against this Fijiana outfit. But none of these players are new to the international scene and they'll be doing all they can to upset the top guns. For us, it'd be a, um, a lot of pressure from uh, Samoa, Tonga, and uh, especially New Zealand, uh, Australia. Too. This year is a threat to sometimes. And uh, we're really proud of that, but still we need to prepare for all those kind of things. Although admitting this weekend's games will be tough, knowing the talent Fiji women possess in Rugby Sevens means there's good reason for their opponents to worry. Uh, last year, Fiji was finished on the, on the third uh, position. I think that will be maintained on that. Uh, and uh, uh, our aim is to win this uh, Oceania uh, again, uh, this year. Fiji! Following the Australian clash, Fijiana takes on Samoa, Papua New Guinea, then New Zealand in the round-robin competition. 
It's a chance to improve from the bowl competition win in Moscow and an even better opportunity to prove that Fijiana will be the team to look out for come Rio 2016. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. It seems a new champion could be crowned in this year's Fiji University Sports Association Games. Fiji National University has shown dominance in women's rugby, basketball and even took out cricket today. Defending champions, University of the South Pacific will, no, will not be easy to overcome, though with one day remaining. Darts, volleyball, netball and futsal have yet to be completed. The Nasinu football side seeks to become the most successful team in Fiji this year, having already won the Fiji Fact and the Battle of the Giants Premier Divisions. If the Southerners win their National League match against Ndriketi on Sunday and win the Courts Inter-District Championship, they become the only team to win all football silverware this year. Shelvin Chan has more. Like all champion sides, the Giants of the Premier Division want to end this year's football season on a memorable note. I would love to keep our unbeaten uh, trend this year and we'd love to continue our winning trend as well. Nasinu didn't shine in the IDC last year, but this year the approach is something different. We played well this year with all our key players back and uh, with return of the veteran players like Azmut Beg and uh, Hosea Lukiti and uh, 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 Lacey uh, we have a very formidable side. The IDC will be next week. Up first is the National League decider against Northerners and Draketi. It's a do-or-die affair with the series tied. Yeah, we respect uh, Draketi. They are a very improved side. However, like uh, Draketi was very lucky because we did not fill our full lineup against uh, Draketi in the both uh, matches. But this time come Draketi, we should be fielding a full strength team and plus we'll be playing at a better ground. They may not be in the same tier as Mba and Nandi, but right now, Nasinu is the only team with a chance to make a clean sweep this year. Shalvin Chan, FBC Sports. And that's it from Sports Tonight. Have yourselves a safe weekend. Good evening. <laughs>the major sectors that are coming into the country for the last six, last nine months or so. This positive growth in investment will surely boost Fiji's economy and open up employment opportunities in the country. Epeli Tukwasa, FBC News. Yes, Jackie, I plan on having a lovely weekend here at the office. Now for the map. And would you look at that? What happened to all the sun we were supposed to have? Well, according to our friends at the weather office, it was an incredibly cloudy day with only the west having sunshine in the afternoon. And not only was it very cloudy, it was also a very cool Friday. But I was the only major center in the 30s while everyone else on the chart had temperatures in the 20s. Tomorrow sees the same conditions for everybody. Sunshine in the morning with rain developing in the afternoon. And there's another strong wind warning. It's in force for Kandavu and Vatuira passages, Yasawa and Mamanuda waters. And speaking of waters, here's a photo taken at Savu Savu Bay. You can actually see the steam from the hot pools where the stream meets the sea. Thanks for the picture, Shakti. That's it from me for the week. We'll catch up again on Monday. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve.
The headlines again, students hospitalized in yet another bus fire, controversial Aztec, sorry, and proposed scrapping of exclusive rights for broadcasters welcomed. To the poll question now, and we're asking, can Fiji defend its Gold Coast Sevens title? Visit www.fbc.com.fj to take part. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's your Friday night news. I'll be back again on Monday. Until then, you have yourselves a safe and enjoyable weekend. For the Martha. Bula, I'm Wame. Join me every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. on The Center Show with classic hits from the 70s as well as the 80s right here on Gold FM. Nisambulo binaka oya wone kama nalani oni nandoro ngozi yao mwe naziwa kina ruwe na visinga mwe na moni tiki na mwaka rumbu kena radio fiji wana ndome ibiti bongani biya nyanu na mwaka talengana vengo na sasi biya nyanu tina kaloko na vengbongi ni buki lulu kena vima mwani walo na vengbongi ni baka rowai mwena mbuza ni walo ninge na mwaka